Good morning, everybody. You are tuned to Computers 2K now on the Nissan Communications Network. I'm Amnon, your host for the next two hours, along with Spence. Good morning. Good morning. And Nick is here. Hello. Hello. Uh, Gal is going to join us shortly, hopefully. Our number is 919-518-9773. Computers 2K Voice on Skype. And today's show is made possible by vMix software wirecast software and is sponsored by tom sinclair of live streaming gear what a week yeah what a week pretty amazing yep i mean on both sides both sides i mean you know weather wise politics wise uh it, it's it's uh it was a big big week but uh, I, I want to start with with uh, weather related UPSs. We all have UPSs. Hopefully, we all have some um, to keep ups. things up. We have all have our ups and downs. Yeah. So over here in the studio, I have uh, an APC rack mounted. I don't know, fifteen hundred watt UPS. And it always works fine. Um, on Thursday, we had really bad weather. Um, it was severe weather. And power just kept on flickering. A lot of people, what, about uh, 200 and some thousand were without electricity for some hours. Um, but I never come in the studio during such occurrences because the power did not go completely out. And even when it goes out, I mean, I, the, the generator, I go out and start it probably within two, three minutes of power going out. But this time I did come here and I look and some of the things were off. And I said, oh, what's going on? So I tried, uh, the computer was on. I unplugged the UPS from the wall and it kept the computer on for about 15 seconds and oh. beep and died. I said, okay, I need to replace battery. So I turned it off and had to go and take care of some pump and things like that because of the rain. Uh, when I had some free time, I came in here and pulled out the, the battery box out of the UPS and put it on the bench. And I'm looking in, and the batteries lay in it on the side. So what you actually seeing are one of the terminals the other terminal is buried down and i see that the terminal has like brown stuff growing on it alien and, virus huh an alien virus uh, yeah so i i touch it with my finger and it's kind of sticky mm -hmm. is so, your finger still there yeah didn't eat your finger up I took the batteries out and the, the, all the terminals on the positive side of the battery were like that. The negative were not. 
but they were actually rusted out. I mean, rusted wow. out to the point that I had to peel them off the terminal on the battery if I wanted to take them off the battery. All right. Said them, you know, it's been there. I look, I always have stickers, and it's it's been there since 2011. Yeah. You know. Wow. Yep. That's said, like that's way fine. beyond the design right. life of it. Yeah. So I took it out. I replaced the terminals. And got four batteries from the cabinet, put it in there, closed it up, put it in, everything is working. Said, okay, well, the UPS on the, on the porch where Kathy's computer is, which holds some other stuff, is also not holding more than a couple of seconds. So that's a little bit bigger. So I took it out on a, on a car, took it in the garage, blew out a dust of, I mean, a cloud of dust. The batteries looked okay. They were uh, swollen, but they were not, not nothing was uh, rusted or had did any. You, did you, what, what kind of voltage were you getting out of them? Did you check them? I did not. You mean from the batteries? Yeah. Nothing. Oh, oh really? I mean, it was like maybe one volt, but. The minute yeah. you, I mean, if I, I short, I, normally I don't check the voltage. I short them. I take a screwdriver and I short. And if it sparks, I know that they're good. None of them even sparked. Hmm. So took them out, brought the thing in, put new batteries in. And this one takes six, six 12 volt batteries. It's, it's 72 volt. Uh, DC and uh, that thing is heavy is I don't know what I mean my back is still kind of hurting but I put I put it in screwed it all in a thousand screws and everything is fine all the other UPSs I mean there, there's a little one here watch I talk about it it's going to die now um we're okay they kept I mean they they never went down uh, the stream restreaming the 24 seven never went down. So it, it was, it was good education Now the one on the, on the porch, the batteries were replaced in 2013. So I, I thought it was newer than that, but so the truth is that Batteries do last a lot longer than what they tell you. And why not let it live its life? Now, if I did not have a generator, I probably would have noticed that, oh, okay, that battery, that computer is not lasting because it lasts just a few seconds or even, you know, two, three minutes. That's, that's not what you have a UPS for. You want it to last a little bit longer so you have time to shut it down and save things. You need to try your UPS. Just don't, I mean, close everything. The way that, the, the way that I check it now is I, I close, I shut down the machines, anything that has a hard drive, shut it down, start the computer, and stop it at the uh, BIOS setup. I mean, you want the computer to be on, you want the monitor on, but you don't want to create a situation where if the power goes out, the hard drive and the power supply on the computer winds down that you can lose data. If it's on the BIOS, nothing is going to, and, and I'm not talking about go into the BIOS, just Press the key to get to the BIOS or any key that can, can pause. If you want to, uh, you know, I, I don't know, different, different computers have different functions like the F1, F2, F9, F8, whatever. You do it like that and then pull the power off of the UPS. Disconnect the UPS from the power and see how long it lasts. 
And those that, like the APCs, and I'm sure some of the other ones, all the ones I have are APC. You unplug it, it'll start going beep, 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 beep. And then as the voltage goes down, it'll start, it'll, it'll start beeping faster. So if you see that it's beeping beep, 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 like that, the power is already low. That means, yeah, you probably need to change the battery. But don't, don't take it for granted. Let it sit there and see how long before the hardware goes down. But make uh, your, your muted, Spencer. You need to just tell people if it goes bad, just buy a new one. No, don't. <laughs> yeah, you could, yeah, replace the batteries. Yeah. That's the way to go. That's yeah. the way to go. They're all set up. They're all set up for the batteries to be replaced. Absolutely. Uh, so, but you want to make sure that everything that is normally on, that's, that's hooked to that UPS is on. Otherwise you're cheating. But it's a good thing to do about every three, four years. I mean, here I am telling you that, and I did not do that myself. But I've, I've been sitting here a few times over the years where the power went out during a show, and I jumped out, went outside to the generator, started it, went to the breaker box outside, turned off the main power, went back to the generator and turned on the the actual alternator because you have to be i mean if it's not automatic you have to be careful you can't turn the generator to to actually electrify the the house without turning off the main, right disconnected from you could, the power. And, the, and the danger is not the danger is the guys working on the poles yeah that yeah. that that is there but yeah. that's not the only thing the other thing is is you could damage the generator if it's trying to Send power the neighborhood <laughs> yeah so yeah. this takes i mean the reason i'm saying this is because it takes about two minutes going back and forth doing that and coming back in the studio and everything is still running so i never worried about it i knew okay yeah that's still running you need to hire a guy to live in a little tent out there just in case to just do it yeah yeah a little guy well, just, one, of, one of them one of them little ones you know the, 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 guy. yeah that's it <laughs> but uh yeah that was that was a good experience uh many times when everything works you don't pay attention to it and eh, you know yeah it's fine everything is all right well it wasn't that fine and i'm glad i didn't have a show during that time a alan was asking what what were the most frequent outages caused by and how long they last it's so all over the place okay but, the the main the ones i mean everything was because trees fell down. Yeah. And I would say, I, I responded back to say that yeah. it's usually a wind, wind related right. trees. Not the, the, the weird thing is, I mean, when we had the strong winds over here, over our area, nothing happened. It's when it moved east, east of us, like toward Nightdale and, and cities east. That's when the, interruption started and i figured you know the power is being you don't know which way the power comes in and i guess it was doing something over there but yeah it's because of wind and and trees and we do have big trees in north carolina and when they fall they fall yes um they have a lot of trees down too with this yeah particular event because the ground was already saturated with right. rain so and yeah, I think the longest the longest outage I ever had in my house was Hurricane Fran, and we were without oh, everybody. Power for, for I think four days. Yeah. Four days. Four days. Oh, yeah. that was nice. I know other people had. Yeah, some we had over a rural, week. Yeah, rural people were out power for two months. No, even in oh no, but even here in Raleigh, I mean, we had it over eight days. Yeah, it depends on where you were. Our, all of our infrastructure in our neighborhood is buried. So yeah. it was the feed That's coming nice. in. As soon as they could restore the feed, we were back up. Um, so the trees falling, and there were a lot of trees that fell by us too, but that didn't take out our poles. So we didn't have, it was a little faster for us. Oh. 
like the people who lived rurally and had a you know, one mile run from the street transformer to their house. Those are the people that had to wait forever because that was the, the one offs were going to be the last people brought back on. We're going to the, go after whoever, whatever could restore power to the most people happens first. Sure. Which makes sense. Yeah. The, the other weird thing that was happening is, uh, Time Warner or the TV, I don't know. The power would go out. The TV is on, on the UPS. But the power was flickering. It's like off and on. Yeah. And then again, off just enough that you can see the emergency light come on and then they go out again. And one time the TV went out. I mean, completely out. So just went and I'm remote and turned back on and everything was fine. But the other time, and at that point, I thought the battery, the, the TV was gone. The picture went out. The audio was still there. And I said, okay, that station that was, is back. That happens a lot lately with our, our cable box for some reason. Has yep. been, it's just, it's That's must what have been it a software was. change or something because it yep. will lose. It, it'll just go blank. It's yep. still on. And if you hit the channel up or down, it'll change channels and it comes back. But for some reason, the stream breaks. I, I, I tried to go up and down and it, everything was dark. But yeah. the sound, I mean, it, it changed. So, yeah, I rebooted the, the box and it came Was back. it like a, an urgent message from secret underground bunker <laughs> coming in on the sound? But it, it was an interest. I mean, I, I don't ever remember it doing this. But it was when an we, interesting educational oh yeah situation we when we moved to apex it was a very small town 4000 people and now it's like 60000 but the back then it was it's still community power it's mm -hmm. it's a it's a long political story as to why it's that way. But, we, but they have to buy their power from Duke Energy anyway, so we actually pay more than most people because it's they have to uplift it to they get it wholesale, but it still costs a little more. But in the beginning days, it was like every weekend we could expect the power to go out. Wow. Usually, usually on Sunday. And it just because the system had to be, it was expanding so quickly, they had to do cutovers and all that. It was crazy. Now uh, it's been very reliable and, and clean. It used to be we get brownouts and just weird sags and, and spikes. And the, the way I could tell is in our bedroom, we have, um, those modules that turn a lamp into a touch lamp. You can turn it in like you could touch it three times and it dims it down and turns it off. You just, if it's a metal lamp. Well, that, that was a great sensor because that would basically detect noise in the electrical system. And that would, you come in, if the lamp was on, you knew the power was, yeah. something happened to the power. So it's kind of interesting. But uh, Nick, you, you had some strong, Storms coming your way the day after, right? Um, the storms really weren't bad. Just the wind the next day was pretty bad. And the power was going out. So you had outages too. Mm -hmm. yeah, across the whole state. Yeah. Hey, Guy. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Gal just got his power on five minutes ago. That's why he wasn't here. He's been without power for the last 48 hours. Is that so well, bad? God mentally, just woke, yes. God just woke up. <laughs> <laughs> well, like I said, his power was off. His yeah. internal power was off. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, uh, yeah no, no big, uh, big issues here. A lot of rain, some wind, but nothing. Nothing too frightening. Nothing there was that a... one band of rain that came through about where, yeah. where I was about 1.45 in the afternoon. That was, I could see, I was driving west on Route 64 and it was, it was cloudy, but it was clear. The skies looked like a, you know, just crazy. And you could see it coming. And as yeah, it like moved a wall. forward, a wall, and as it moved forward, everything behind it disappeared. <laughs> and I'm driving along in the truck and the rain temperature must have been so different that immediately, as soon as it started to rain, the inside glass all condensed out. Mm. 
So I not only did I have the visibility problem with the rain, suddenly there was a white film on all the windows. So I had, uh, we were all slowing down, putting our flashes on. So everybody was good. But the, um, I had to turn the heat, the air conditioning would not take it out. I had to turn on the heat. And, that and it was hot period. outside. And it was, yeah, it was already, it was, I don't know what the temperature was, probably in the 60s um, at the time, maybe, maybe close to 70 when, it, when the storm came through. And then the temperature with the, with the front, it just dropped. The temperature must have changed yeah. enough that it caused the air to condense. And uh, so, yeah, it was pretty, that, that part of it was really scary because I, I lost visibility going forward. I could still tell cars are in front of me. And some people were still riding with their lights yeah. off. I was like, come on, what is wrong with you people? Yeah. That's yeah, I the remember, problem. I remember, I remember driving through something like this. Uh, to, uh, we were driving to South Carolina uh, on a weekend. And suddenly, it's uh, probably around May, June. And uh, like the time of year didn't make sense at all. And this pouring rain uh storm system whatever came over it was like it was ridiculous yeah and yeah. and I, I had the same the same experience as you as this film of uh the screen of uh rain that uh, just comes at you can you yeah. imagine can you imagine being in a plane <laughs> <laughs> well they have the, all, all of the instrumentation. Most of it there is done automatically, and not all of it is relying on line of sight, right? So there's a there's a great book. This guy's name is Ernest Gann. He he was a pilot, but his he became a screenwriter and wrote a lot of famous uh, Hollywood scripts or that were related to aviation. But he talks about the early days. He was one of the very first pilots that flew for American Airlines in the 1930s. And he talks about how they would fly these DC twos around upstate New York and they would go through thunder. They couldn't, they couldn't climb. I mean, obviously they had to fly through the storm. They couldn't go high enough. Right. And they talked about how they would literally slide down in their seats and cover their faces like this because of the lightning. So they could see the instruments and they, and they would prepare. They knew they were going into it and they prepare for it. And back then it was like, yeah. they would lose 20 or 30 planes a year. And he, in his book, he has a list of all the commercial pilots that died from the early 30s up until the 1960s. And it's a list of hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of names. And how, how weather-related stuff was just, that was the biggest problem. It wasn't necessarily mechanical, it was weather. Whew. No, I'll tell you. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. So what else has been going on? Let's talk about Microsoft for a minute. Yes, please do. If you are a Microsoft Teams user, you may have experienced an outage this week because Microsoft did not renew their SSL certificate for <laughs> Teams. And yeah. there was a mass outage on it was either Monday or Tuesday across the, the, the whole world as the certificates expired for people. And um, there you go. So. It didn't expire for people. It expired for their server. Yeah, yeah, but I'm saying as it yeah. propagated for yeah, people yeah. as they, you know, new requests yeah. to the server and said, "Hey, oh, never mind, yep. no certificate valid." Incredible. Yeah, that was like a ridiculous outage. I came came to work, try to connect, no connection. Oh, do you guys use Teams? Yeah. Wow, oh, fantastic. Yeah. Oh, so what did you was... do? This was literally an outage that everybody needed to wait for Microsoft. I, there's one thing I can tell, I can say. Uh, it took them, I think, less than two hours to figure it out and roll out the solution. And yep. in about three hours, everything started working again. Um, I'm, I tried comparing this to an outage of an on-premises system, right? Let's say, you know, uh, exchange is on-premises and uh, uh, something goes out, you know, the CEO can't email right now, right? Uh, and I think they handled it very well. Uh, their Twitter account was 
updating uh, everyone on uh, progress. So overall, it was a fiasco that it actually happened, but the way they responded to it, I think was, uh, uh, was very well. That's, that's my feeling as an end user, right? Well, uh, business was hurt. Businesses were hurt for sure. I, I don't disagree with that. This is an out, this is not a service disruption caused by hardware or right. uh, some buggy code. This is just pure negligence. Oh, yeah. Negligence. Yeah. Negligence completely. And what I look at here is the uh, demise of Microsoft's large QA team that they previously had, um, or QC team rather. This may have been a job that was previously held by some of those members. So it was making, you know, making sure certificates and dates, things were on either auto renew or set up to renew. And they fired all these people and then they're like, oh, I thought, thought you did the certificate. No, no, that was Jim and QC. Oh, well, Jim's unemployed now, so we don't have a certificate for teams. And, and I don't know. That's how, what it's gotta be. How else do you let a certificate like that lapse? Yeah, there's no reason. Absolutely no reason. And, and the, the thing is, I, I don't understand how it works with certificates for this, but SSL is SSL. And they are private citizens that when they update or when they renew their SSL certificate, they do it for like nine years in advance. I mean, oh, it, no, you don't, you don't do it today for big business. You do it for a year, maybe, maybe even less because you want to make sure that it's always valid and haven't been hacked. Right? Okay, no, no, no. So, I'm, I'm just saying that this, yeah. is, I mean, this is the, a way of thinking. Hey, I'm going to, to do it. And yeah, many times we have tell people, hey, I'd actually, I'd but, make the opposite argument, Amnon. It's even yeah. worse to do it every nine years because then you do it once and in nine years, you nobody knows who the hell is responsible for it. That is that probably the worst thing. Then, you, you mean yeah. they didn't have GoDaddy's automatic renewal but, once turned on? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, they go to renews everything the, else on your freaking account. Thing, the thing they is, had they had the Microsoft auto renewal, oh, but nobody knew who would switch to switch. <laughs> <laughs> this is a test of the automatic renewal system. Had this been a real emergency? Yeah, it, it's it's it, it, these the, these days to to have a certificate expire on you is just negligence. Yep. There is absolutely no excuse. They used to be, you know, oh, yes, yeah, somebody changed. And I, I work with a lot of uh, nonprofits. I have a lot of nonprofit uh, websites. And these change all the time. The people change all the time. And it took some time in the early years to realize, okay, so Joe at XYZ.com gets the notice that the certificate needs to be renewed. And Joe is no longer there. So you you started changing it and say, okay, president at blah, blah gets the notice. And president is always the first one that they let you know, okay, uh, Susie is out. Uh, George is in. He is the president. Can you please change that email? That, because it's always a forward. So that always worked. But the auto renew. I mean, they don't just auto renew with, uh, they let you know, I, 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 all I can speak for is register.com. They let you know in 14 days, uh, your domain is going to, uh, renew or from let's encrypt. If it doesn't do it 30 days before it's due, it lets you know that it's going to do it. And if it doesn't do it, it starts sending you an email every day. I had a problem doing it. That's only when there's a problem. I had a problem. They were sending they were sending the email to the internal person who was responsible for it, but he was gone. Well, no, you see, but that's that's <laughs> the that's the that that's the negligence. You don't. Well, yeah, of course. Right? But the, the but the other part to notice here is unlike your websites or our websites, mm -hmm. th this is not installed in just one location. Oh, absolutely, got thousands yeah. of servers in yeah. which this is installed. So right. it's not as simple as 
oh, just click renew button. I mean, there's a process yeah. that goes into deploying yeah, a certificate across the, the, the hundreds of servers. I'm not, I'm not excusing no, no. it, but it's not a, a not but a one click install like your websites and mine are. Right, but the thing is, when there is hundreds of servers, it's even easier uh, in a way because nah, you wait, 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 wait. You because you, it's not the same certificate for each server, so you get a slew of emails. There's a problem with this. There's a problem with that, and you get it daily, and you have. A bunch of days well, before it's complete. It was, it was a single certificate because it affected globally. Yeah, it was. It's one so it, yeah. so uh, it's one I, service. It's just running on different instances, right? There, it's um, everybody is getting their share of it, but the service itself has the same certificate. The thing is, I, I, I'm not expert at this. I don't know if two servers, two hosts. Can get the same certificate i don't think it's possible but it may be possible well, it's not about that so if if it's the, going the to way, a main if it's going to a when main you're going one, to when you're going to www.google.com yeah right mm -hmm. you're getting a page but that page every time you go there comes from a different server that's right? fine but you but it's getting it from somewhere else but the, it's a virt, it's they virtualize this so right but you're the, not uh, talking with a with a single point yeah never you're but you always talking getting, to an array of right. servers so and it's that's okay. why you can do it with a single certificate and the single certificate is being served by that array so okay the same here i think what what actually dropped wasn't the um the certificate for each of the individual services. Teams is basically a shell for SharePoint. Mm -hmm. And uh, it uses SharePoint as the backbone to uh, manage chats, uh, documents, a lot, of, a lot of stuff, okay? okay? It's like, if you've ever heard about Slack, which started this sort of revolution, uh, uh, Teams is Microsoft's version for that. Okay. So, uh, and, and I think what actually dropped was the uh, interface that does the authentication just for the team service. And okay. so that front end, that, that first point of contact for authentication, mm -hmm. that has the same, uh, uh, the same certificate for everyone. It doesn't matter what your address okay. is. What, if All the right. addresses were different, you're correct. A different certificate for, di for different addresses, right? Uh, but as hosts themselves, they can still share the same. Okay. Yeah. All right. So I, I'm not familiar with how it looks like on a, on a, yeah. in a, in a network like that. But uh, again, I, I think it was a good lesson for them too. I don't think it'll happen again. They, I, oh, hopefully, I so. hopefully they they'll they'll develop a system that will prevent it from happening. That's good. Well, Amnon, it's, there, there's a new technology come out. It's called woke networking, where there's no security, everything's <laughs> wide open, just let everybody access anything they want at any time. That's, I think <laughs> it would work, right? What, what's what could be the problem? You were saying. I think the uh, Nick? I think the bigger thing here is not that this won't happen to Microsoft again, but a lot of companies like Slack and Google and Apple seeing the um, uh -oh. incompetence of Microsoft uh, in some regards, probably made sure that their IT department was made aware of their certificate ex expiration. So uh, this is a good learning experience for the entire IT community, Absolutely. Not, not just Microsoft. Well, they contacted Bill Gates, but he was busy. Yeah, he was too busy shooting up kids in Africa with whatever, <laughs> stupid foundation. <laughs> So yeah, good learning experience for the whole IT community, for sure. Yeah. But uh, and there was uh, another problem with uh, Windows, something with the search. Oh yeah, Microshaft. Yeah. Um, I mean, I have the article here. Anybody had a, a an actual experience? Yeah. They can talk. Okay, go ahead. Talk about it. About seventy phone calls about my search not working from every every computer that uses Windows Ten. The huge. Uh oh. Um, wasn't what? 
Nick, you're you're breaking up and you're getting ro- 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 like a robot. Hey, Spence? Jitter. He's got jitter going on. Jitter. He's, he's jittery. How about now? Yep. That's fine. Yeah, go ahead. Um, so there was an issue with the Windows 10 search this week. Um, it just stopped working. And the solution was two uh, reg edit commands via command line and an explore restart to fix it. And it just, it ran, it started on Thursday. First, it started on my coworker's computer. And he's like, what the, what the hell's going on here? So I went to, of course, my first uh, place to go is sysad, uh, uh, shitty sysadmin on Reddit to see what they're talking about. And of course, it's the top post. Um, and those fix was there. You didn't have this issue, go? No, but then again, I don't really use the search. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, this this is a very widespread issue. Um, this, the search just stopped working. And for those of you out there, this is the the Windows file search. Yeah, I'll post an article to the to the fix on Would, Reddit where you can run these commands in CMD and um, get back up and running. Yeah, I'm trying to think like I'm trying to wrap my head about um, when I would use the search other than opening to a start program. An, yeah, I would start an application. That's what you I use. It for, yeah. But then again, on my work computer, I don't use the search. I have a very old uh, application that uh, does that for me. It's called Find and Replace uh, Robot, F A R R. Uh, which is practically does what the search does. It just does it on its own. And I've been used to that. So probably I just didn't experience it. Strange. Yeah. So, so there's the link. It was an issue with Bing search and Cortana search. Um, so you run two reg add commands from CMD and then a, 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 a T kill, which restarts the search UI, which essentially is explore. And that comes right back. Very, very easy fix. So I wrote a little batch script, deployed it to all of our computers across like a thousand machines into a private directory. And then as people called with it, I could remote into their computers, run the batch script and it was. Oh, interesting. So what the registry does is disable yeah. Bing and Cortana. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it fixed it. Because the tie into it, you know what? I actually think it's exactly the same issue. Bing and Cortana are services that are relying on the on the web, right? And so while you're searching, it's probably waiting for web at, uh, web uh, responses, and those are failing because of a failed uh, certificate. So I thought the same thing, but if uh, well, I tried this, if you disconnect your computer from the network, you still can't search. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I don't know what the hell the issue was, and it, like it's not like I had even done an update; it just stopped working. Okay, so I'll tell you why I didn't experience this. I disable Bing and Cortana, the first uh, option I yeah. have when I get to a, a PC. There you go. So, okay, okay, so that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, what a real, what a pain in the ass, though. <laughs> the, the yeah, especially, especially when customers call you and they well, keep it, complaining. It, it was and... like, a, like a random Wednesday or Thursday, and all yeah. of a sudden my coworker's like, is your search working? I'm like, yeah, of course. And I click on it. Like, no, it's not. He's like, what the hell's going on? Oh, I'm like, was, I don't know. To Reddit it, we go. <laughs> it was the top post. It was Wednesday? Wednesday or Thursday. Maybe it's, yeah. Oh, I so, so I know what's the reason. Four days ago. It was on uh, February 5th, which was what? The Wednesday, yeah. Yeah, Patch I, Tuesday. I, know, I know what it is. What, Patch Tuesday? No, it was because of Trump. Oh, yeah, the impeachment <laughs> sham. Yeah. Didn't work. They tried to impeach Cortana and Bing, and those also <laughs> failed. Only it was a lot easier to bring them back. Yeah. Yeah, what a pain, though. So, yeah, that was exciting. Phone calls all day about my search not working. That was oh. fantastic. But you fixed it. But oh, Reddit fixed it. I copied yeah. the solution, yes. Yeah, <laughs> which is fine. Yeah. Reddit couldn't have fixed it for all your customers. Yeah, they could have installed that goose program. But uh, it's, it's, again, it is something that hopefully Microsoft will learn from. Yep. And there is a, a 
problem now with Windows 7. Yeah, you shouldn't be using it. Well, <laughs> a lot of people still use it. Where, where was it? Um, a weird bug of unknown <clears throat> origin. What? A weird bug. Yeah. I mean, there has, aren't bugs has, that aren't weird. <laughs> has been hitting Windows 7 computers this week. According to multiple reports online, Windows 7 users have been reporting that they are receiving a pop-up message that reads, you don't have permission to shut down this computer every time they attempt to shut down or reboot their system. So Microsoft will most likely need to make another exception and deliver a second post-end-of-life update pretty soon. You know, they, they, uh, they put... Uh, a fix a patch even after it was because of yeah the for problem. critical stuff yeah yeah so they probably will do it again um i tried i hope they don't no come on they have to. i hope they I mean, don't there I mean, this hopefully this was a uh a purposeful um, yeah that's what i was thinking yeah be a smart move no it's a oh you can't shut down your computer well <laughs> upgrade to the free operating system that we've been giving you for the last four years yeah, yeah but i can't uh shut down to reboot <laughs> i mean <laughs> let me tell you what gal there's a great thing known as either unplugging it from the wall or holding down yeah. the power button that will but, work every time <laughs> but that breaks the computer uh, uh, i don't know yeah i've never had that experience oh i've i've actually had that have you yeah it's rare it's rare but when it happens you're like no my mother was always right she told me to never <laughs> reboot my computer without letting it peacefully gracefully shut down <laughs> damn you i mean it it's amazing but i've got some customers that when uh when you talk to talk them over the phone and you tell them okay now so shut down Shut down the computer. All right, so let me go down under the desk. I said, for what? I said, because that's how I shut it down. I press the button. Well, yeah, that and does work. Pressing the button does work. It will gracefully shut it down. I don't know. That's if yeah, you, oh, wait, wait, wait. That's if you press and let go. But if mm -hmm. you press it and hold it in for oh, yeah, six seconds, it. it just shuts down. And that's what people are doing. Oh, and, and I, <laughs> In the last few years, I have not had anybody that lost anything. It happened to me with, I, I, I believe it's more of an XP uh, era. With Windows 7, I don't know that it was, that it ever actually lost anything, uh, shutting it down like that. Now, you have but, to be in the middle of either, I've even, I've even shut down a computer during a Windows update where it tells you do not shut it down and yeah. it still comes back. You have to, there ha all of the stars have to align. Yeah. For you to. Yeah, but but it's true. a good. That's true. But the thing is, it's a good practice not to. Oh, for sure. If you can help it. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I mean, many times when people cannot, when it will not restart, I tell them, I said, just hold the button in, you know, because like you said, you know, unplug it from the wall. Yeah, what are you going to do? Press the button and hold it, and it'll do it. But, yeah, it's it's just interesting that, that uh, you see, there's a lot of people that are still using Windows 7, and they will for, for a long time. It, they, can't, they can't ignore that. People are upgrading, and, boy, did I talk a lot of people to upgrade. A lot of people don't know that it's still free. I had a customer here this week. That had a problem with her computer or something with the bank and she thought she was infected and it was windows 7 and i said now pat you know you're gonna have to upgrade it to windows 10. she said yeah the guy at the bank told me and I, but i really i mean at this point i don't have the money to get windows 10. i said it's free said, it's free that's not what he told me he said i have to go online and purchase a license uh, I don't think so. So she's going to bring it this week. She she needed the computer. Is she going to bring it I, this week? And we'll see. I found a new bank. You did? I said I'd find a new bank. Oh, you'd find. <laughs> oh. Yeah, you trust these. They're trying to spend yeah. all your money. I wouldn't trust these people. 
Um, let's see what else is going on. There's a big uh, spectrum oh, Time yeah. Warner yeah. outage across the Northeast yesterday for a couple of hours. There was a, a fiber conflict from all I could find out. Um, it was called that caused a service disruption from like Maine to Ohio. Cable, not internet, for most people. They cleared that up pretty quick, about three or four hours. Yeah, sometimes colors don't don't go with each other. Yeah, that's what happens. Get a conflict. Ta da! <laughs> but it's it's yeah it 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 was. I you know I don't know how many of you reboot. Your cable box on a regular basis. I tried to. And many times you reboot it. And when it comes back, uh, it counts down. There are like, I think, 13 or 11 different stages. And it'll stick and just sit there. Four. Uh, Three. <laughs> it'll just sit, sit there forever. Yeah. And you have to unplug it and plug it in again. And it'll chance. I mean, it, it never happened more than once. And then the second time it'll go. But it's weird because when you see it in the beginning, that's the, the shot, the image that you sent, Nick, with the color boxes at the bottom that were counting. Yeah. Well, the boxes it, rebooted themselves because the cable went out, I think. Um, it doesn't do it here. That's weird. It depends. I don't know what the. Uh, I don't know what. The, I guess if the power goes <clears> out, it will. But if the cable goes out, I don't know. But the point is, you sit there and it goes and goes and it just rolls and rolls. It's sort of like the windows starting, and and you don't know how long it's going to take. And sometimes it seems like okay, now is it really going to do it now? Because it's going too long. It's the same thing. Um. But, uh, I, you know, when Nick sent that, that image, and said, yeah, well, don't, don't reboot your box because it may stick. Let's see. What, 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 is somebody keeping up with the chat? No. I was. Um, <laughs> I'll get back to it here. Yeah. Three. Uh, John is saying the L3 takes a long time. That's true. L3. Yeah. L3. Yep. But it's. it's oh, yeah. Alan is asking about it, the whole Chroma stuff, what they do, that they do with um, making all that stuff appear on the, on the field, the lines, you know, for the first down and all that. That's, that's not even that's called a, Chroma. There's another. It's not. No, it's that. a different. It's a different name because they don't. It's not Chroma anymore. But they no. they can do well, multi. They can do image layering. Uh, well, what you're doing is Chroma. Oh, I'm doing is Chroma because I actually but, have a a blue screen behind me. Yeah, it's, which I have to uh, tune color saturation and all that to get it to work right, and I can put an image in front of it. Yeah, that's it's some sort of. Um, I guess it could be called image imposement, something of something in that, yeah. of that regard. Um, but the tracking is the interesting part about that. Not that it's not hard to put lines. It's not hard to put something in front of your face on top of you. The key is tracking it. So what the, sy the systems that they have for football games is they've got a virtual, this software that does this, the first down markers, has a full map of the whole stadium and all of the cameras are virtually located inside that. So when they switch to camera eight, the software knows where to put the lines in correspondence with where that camera is located. It's, it's very complex. What's, what's fascinating about it is how they can have the line sitting on top of the field and then the player's feet yep. on top of the line. So Not it's cool. all intelligent. They're basically building a layered system, a virtual layered system, which is, and if, like you said, it, you notice sometimes that there are things that they don't have when the when the ball is in motion. There might be some things that they do, can't do well uh, that they don't do. But think of how much that's changed. I, I remember when I was working for IBM about five years. This is God, I'm going to date myself in the '80s. 
I went to a job fair at a local company that was a, they made broadcasting equipment, chroma equipment, Chiron equipment for uh, broadcasting. And they were op- had an open house they were hiring. And I went to see their presentation. In the 80s, it was incredible what they had. Yeah, there, there's, a, there's a new way of doing, uh, not chroma key, something, something with depth. Nick, you probably know about this. What's it called? Something I have no idea. They, they don't need to use a green screen behind you anymore. It's, it's oh, yeah, depth. there is some way to do it with depth. Yeah. yeah. Uh, a lot of, I, I see a lot of writing about it. And new software allows you to do it. And... Well, this, the Chroma stuff is, is such low impact processor wise. It doesn't require right. a lot to do it. You can do it, uh, but the, the new stuff inquire, requires, you know, some pretty sophisticated workstations to crunch all those numbers that mm-hmm. needed to do what it has to do. It's, it's the power, it's the computing power that allows them to do, you know, it has allowed all this stuff to advance so much. So wait till we, a uh, deep fake, Aaron Amnon and I were just talking about this this week. The deep fake stuff is, uh, it's really scary about what, can be done now and how it's going to be very difficult to explain to people that, oh, the stuff you heard or saw is fake or the, to confirm that the stuff you heard and saw was real. So, yep. And I would en- encourage you, and we were talking about this, if, you, if you're not aware of this movie called Looker, it's a Michael Crichton science fiction movie from the eighties. Go back and see if you can find it. It is fascinating because it predicts all this stuff is going to happen in the 1980s. Absolutely amazing. Don't expect a very good movie though. It was okay. What? <laughs> the movie. No, no, it was a, it was definitely like watching an old eighties movie as far yeah. as. Yeah. I, I remember, I, I remember <laughs> that watching it back then yeah. and tried watching it again. It's a very dated movie, yes. but I still love the concept. The yeah. I know, I know what you mean. Yeah. It's it's corny as hell. Yeah, but uh, it's like I was watching Nighthawks with Sylvester Stallone, and I'm like, oh my god, the acting is horrible, the <laughs> script writing is awful. But I remember going to see that movie and how much I liked it back then. It was uh, so it's kind of cool to go back and watch it. Billy D. Williams is also plays one of the cops, and he's so over the top. I said, come on, nobody acts this way. It's pretty funny. All right, Spence, are you ready for specials? I am ready. I am ready. And we have a new, uh, a new offering. Uh, each week we try to come up with a new uh, Computers 2K Now uh, compost special or compost offering. So this week's, we're introducing our new service, which is uh, Impeachment of the Month Club. So uh, you'll be able to sign up now for uh, a new impeachment delivered to your mailbox, your inbox, every month. So we need to keep our reps busy. Uh, you know, the, the, the more they're tied up with this, the less harm they can do. No, I don't really mean that. But uh, So sign up today for the new uh, Impeachment of the Month Club. And uh, it's free for Bernie supporters. Everybody else pays uh, twelve fifty a month. <laughs> All right. Oh, Spence. Okay, okay. All right. So uh, each week I... I I'm always looking for ways either to do this more quickly or to not have the same tired content every week. So um, I got through the, st- the Staples ad pretty quickly. That's the easiest site to work with because they have it's the best organized. I did not do Office Depot this week because it was pretty much, this, again, the same items on sale. So um, I did find a couple of unique things on the Staples site, which I'll point out. But um, all right, February 9th. 2020 Computers 2K Now specials, starting with Staples. We've got an HP Pavilion laptop i7 of 569. That's $280 off the regular price. Got a 14-inch a, 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 a 14-inch HP laptop with an AMD A9 processor for 259, which is 140 bucks off the regular price. Now that is an older processor, but boy, what a what a a good deal on a on a knockaround laptop. Uh, especially a 14 inch. Uh, they've got an HP i5 desktop for 499, which is 130 bucks off. A 21 inch uh, 
LED monitor for $89, that's 20 off, a 31.5 inch LED monitor for 179, which is 50 bucks off. Both of those are HP. Uh, Logitech illuminated uh, keyboard uh, for $59.99, that's 20 bucks off. Uh, now I never saw one of these before. This is a Logitech mouse that's a multi-device mouse. So you don't have to have a mouse keyboard combo that supports the multi-device technology. Now you have it built into the mouse. So if you travel and you have you want to control, say you're in a remote office somewhere or you're in your office locally and you have a laptop and a desktop and you don't have, for whatever reason, this is just a great convenience to have a multi-device mouse. Or if you're in support and you have a bunch of servers and you, you want to, uh, you have an individual screen already there. You don't need a KVM, but you would like to be able to individually control uh, each one. It's, it's a great application. It's $32.99, which is seven bucks off the regular price. Uh, we've got a HP portable one terabyte USB solid state drive for $149, which is 20 off. Got an Epson Workforce ES300WR. This is the wireless portable scanner for $289 which is 90 bucks off the regular price. Very good for mobile professionals, especially if you're in insurance or financial planning or something like that, and you gotta have, you know, scan documents in uh, on the fly, take it with you. This is another interesting product, this next thing, it's the Zoomi on-air uh, small light stand. And this is for, basically for either uh, video cat podcasting or, selfies or whatever it's just literally an led light stand you'd see the picture of it here that you can attach your smartphone to and they come it comes in two different sizes this is a smaller one it's 24.99 it's not on sale but it's something new and i'll i'll get into that same theme when i get to some of the new products feature page at the end of the end of the specials all right amazon echo auto small assistant for 29.99 all right i did not spend the time to go and look at this. What makes this different from the regular Echo? That's the question I have. Did anybody know? Why, what's different about it? Does it not have speakers built in? Uh, More Bobby compact? speakers built in? It must no, have it a does, speaker. But it doesn't have Wi-Fi, right? It needs to be in the vehicle. It's for a vehicle. Is it for a vehicle? Yes, it's for a vehicle. That's yeah. Yeah. Auto yeah. Oh. Or it has I to know. work on how Wi-Fi. do you connect it? There's a blue, that's must what be Bluetooth. I don't know. Yeah. If so. it's Bluetooth, then it's it'll be rather lame. Um I mean maybe hmm. you need to create the hotspot from your oh. cell phone. That could but be. then again, if you have a cell phone in the car, I can't see the use of this. I, I don't really understand. And if you've already got something like autoplay, then why would you yeah. want this? But that's what time will tell. Here. Time will tell. Well, maybe it's, maybe that's why it's cheaper. It's it's you know it, it knocked off twenty bucks, normally forty nine for twenty nine. So, yeah, I'll I'll have to drill down more into this, but I just didn't have the time this morning. Uh, we've got a Roku Express. Uh, they call now it's called a multimedia receiver, but that's fine. Uh, for twenty four ninety nine, full featured Roku device, uh, smaller form factor. It does support HDMI. Uh, that's uh, Five dollars off the regular price. Uh, Seagate Backup Plus Slim two terabyte USB hard drive for sixty four ninety nine, fifteen dollars off. That's usually about the cheapest you'll see it on sale for the two terabyte drive. The one terabyte is usually the cheapest you'll ever see it is forty forty five dollars and typically forty nine. I've got a Canon Color Image Class Laser Wireless Printer. For one eighty four, ninety five dollars off the regular price. So still, color lasers in uh, reachable, comfortable price. Mm -hmm. Nothing was as good as that deal we got on the Dell machines, but uh, still, the prices continue to come down. And finally, uh, if you're sitting in your chair this morning in front of your computer and your back hurts, then you can go with the Staples De Dexali Mesh Task Chair. Which is one hundred thirty nine dollars, which is one hundred and ten bucks off the regular price. So that's it for staples. 
Moving on to Best Buy, we've got the Arlo 4 Camera Pro, Arlo 2 4 Camera Pro Indoor Outdoor uh, Video Surveillance System for 499, which is 640 off. People who have Arlo really like it. Uh, there are some things about it that are different. Uh, it is battery powered cameras, and they are typically set up to be motion detection because otherwise the batteries wouldn't last very long if it was constantly recording. But depending on the application, it's a great device. It's not something you want to use in a retail establishment where you want to have constant video surveillance. So for the home, when you just want it to trigger off of uh, motion, uh, and the fact that they have battery mounts, or I should say not battery, uh, uh, magnetic mounts for the cameras that you can you know, put them up outside and usually take them down to change the battery and put it back up again. It's uh, they've, they've done a little homework on setting this up to be user friendly. Yeah. They have the magnet that sticks to trees. Does it store the video locally? It can, I believe there, I believe it can. Some of them, some of the cameras do have onboard storage. So if you don't connect back to the hub, I, I, like I said, I'm not familiar with this, but people no, what I mean by hub. locally, I mean like inside the home instead of in the good cloud. question. I don't know. So I, most of these are cloud services. Yeah. I have a, I have a local NVR, but I have a traditional, well, it's, it's a modified cabled system. It actually works over power over ethernet. My cameras are supported through the ethernet through POE. Yeah. And, but I have the, the, the a one terabyte surveillance drive, uh, storage drive that's made specifically to be written continuously. And that's where it records. And I have like three weeks worth of recording locally, but I can still access it too. I can go online with my smartphone or to, from a computer and get in and look at the video and it, it will allow me to save clips. And, what server do you use? Uh, it is a, um, what's the Zimodo, name what was here? It? It's, it's a popular company out there. What is it called? Zimodo, oh, what is it? The Something Moto, Zimoto, Osmoto. Zimo, yeah, that's it. Uh, if I look at my phone, I'll be able to tell you right away here. There's so many different things I've been looking at recently. Giz I haven't Gizmodo. really touched this much. Zimoto. Zimoto. Okay. Zimoto. Yeah. Take and a look. There's a lot of there's a lot of variants yeah. of the same. They took the same core software and developed it, and they're 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 actually pretty good. They have a lot of standalone cameras now. What I like about the Zimoto system is I have the traditional. They have a lot of older traditional wired cameras, mm -hmm. which you can take any of the new um, IP or it's IP the... wireless cameras yeah. and integrate them into the same app, right? Which is nice. And I, from what I understand, it's even possible now with the new software for to set up a virtual link to an NVR, so you can actually have those cameras recording locally over IP, over the Wi-Fi to the NVR. You don't have to be directly wired to it. So that's, that's pretty cool. Yeah. I've been playing with some open source, uh, uh, systems like that servers found a few. I'll take yeah. a look at that. Yeah. And they, they have a lot of different gener. If you look at the different NVRs they've sold over time, lots of, you'll see it's like the six different versions of the software. Each one has its own interface. So that was confusing. Now they've actually, everything they sell now is standardized on the new uh, oh, so Zimodo, you need to have their NVR in order to have all of the I don't know that that's true. Yeah, uh, you okay. do. You do. I, I think that, well, it could be that there's somebody makes one open source that you can oh. actually point the camera to. I don't know. The Wi-Fi stuff. The, the wired stuff is proprietary. Definitely. Okay. It's okay. a proprietary vo uh, power over Ethernet uh, adaptation. So. Okay. But uh, if you if you have the wire infrastructure, I built it into my attic where I ran from the four corners of my house. I ran cables over, and I actually put in a little mini patch panel. That if you come down the stairs from my attic, there's a four four port wall plate that goes right through the wall to my office, where there's another four port wall plate on the other side. So I plug in the cameras on the attic side, plug in the, the cable to the NVR on the office side. So it's literally plug and play from that perspective. It just makes it a lot easier than I didn't have to run wires through the wall except to yeah. install that patch panel. So yeah, I'm thinking of setting up something like that. Yeah. I'm, I'm 
I'm really disappointed with everything that's uh, Wi-Fi based. Yeah, it can be in your interference. It can really yeah, usually just doesn't work. Yep. Uh, not yep. when you need it. So. So yeah, yeah, this is this is very reliable, and uh, the the cameras that I have are actually the earlier generation. The newer stuff is much higher quality. The uh, HD and uh, the low light capability that LEDs they've built into them just make it amazing. Yeah, I'm happy with what I have for what I what I paid for it. I bought a rare, I bought a bare bones NVR with no drive in it, and I put my own drive in. All right, you can still buy those kits. Okay, but I digress. Okay, so they've got a JVC two and a, six and a half inch Apple CarPlay built in uh, car stereo for two forty nine, which is normally three forty. So it's uh, oh three forty nine is a hundred bucks off. Uh, Samsung Notebook 7 Spin 15.6 inch touchscreen AMD Ryzen 5 uh, laptop, two, 8 gig memory, 256 gig solid straight drive for 599. That's normally 700, so it's uh, $101 off or $100, $100 and one penny off, right? Uh, Samsung 24 inch LED monitor for 109. Normally 149. Here's an interesting device. I stumbled across this, and at first I was thinking, well, I'll make fun of this. But it, it, some people, this could be important. It's if you have Samsung appliances, and but there's, and there's a specific list of what will work with this adapter. This is the Samsung Universal Smart Home Adapter. This will allow you to either using this, the Samsung Smart Home Hub or independent of that directly to your smartphone monitor and control your washer, dryer, and refrigerator. <laughs> now, I mean, I, I make fun of this, right? Because to me, it's like, eh, but. Does it come they, with a robot that, tick, that has it hands does. that fix it the. It does. It has a robot. It, it goes around, cleans the floors and all that stuff. A virtual robot. But no, if you, if you want to say you got kids at home during the day and you're working and you know, they're supposed to do the laundry and you want to make sure it's happening, you can go and say, what, what's, what's the machine doing right now? And same thing with your refrigerator. It's so it, okay, now, it depends now, on what you want to do. Now, you see, that's, that's okay that you, you can check what it's doing. But to control, you cannot take the laundry from the dryer. No, you can't. And from, well, no, but if you floor. loaded it in the morning, closed <laughs> up the washing machine, and an hour before you head home, activate Turn it, on. it. Yeah. Mm. Yep. Why not? Yep. And your refrigerator. If it's possible, why not? Right. Uh, you can you can find out how many times the door has been opened and closed. <laughs> That's pretty cool. So, hey, it, it, it's it's out there. Yeah. So I think the new new appliances probably have this built in. But if you have one that's got a USB port on it and can be added, I just threw it out there. Twenty-four bucks, twenty-four ninety-nine. All right, we've got a Lenovo AMD uh, A6 laptop, one terabyte uh, hard drive, four gig memory for two nineteen, regularly two seventy-nine. So this is an older machine, but again, a good knock around coffee table web browsing machine. Um, We've got a Samsung one terabyte internal solid state drive for 149, normally 160. Uh, if anybody has used Tile before, which is the these are the RFID chips that you can use to locate and track devices. The, the system keeps getting better. I had the one of the original keychain fobs so that would help me find my keys, which was really handy. You can use your smartphone, you can make a chirp, and you can use some geo tracking within the house to it depends. It can tell you that it's at least it's home, that it's not somewhere else. Uh, but this is the uh, four piece kit that comes with uh, one of the, a couple of slim and a couple of sticker trackers uh, for 49 bucks. All right, this is for you, Amnon. Look at this, mo this is a monitor. This is mm -hmm. not a television. Right. It's a 49 inch wide screen curved monitor. Amazing. This is this is definitely you know a Hollywood sh you know it, be, have it in a cool movie prop because uh, unless you have that I I don't know that it would fit 59, 49 inches diagonal. I'd have to measure. It'd probably be wider <laughs> than my desk. 
So, because I have two two twenty four inch monitors side by side here, and it's almost as wide as my desk. So forty, yeah, so about the same. But it's nine hundred and twenty nine dollars. It's uh, sixty dollars off the regular price. And then finally, if you, <laughs> this is something new. It's coming out. You can pre order it. This is the entire nine movie Star Wars digital copy edition, four K Ultra Blu Ray set. Pirate. And, Huh? Pirated. Pir yeah, probably. <laughs> so if you look at the discs and the labels peel off too easy, you know it was pirated. Uh, but this is the entire the entire set with all kinds of special features and stuff. It's two. You can pre-order it for two forty nine. It says that the release date hasn't been announced yet, but it, the product itself has been announced. So, but I would guess it's going to be the new of uh, the the original three movies. It's not going to be the, ori the the original theatrical versions of it because those were all pulled back. They don't sell it anymore. If you, if you have the videotape or the original discs, um, hold on to them because they're, they're very much in demand. We have, I don't know that we have the DVDs, but we do have the, the, the actual videotapes of the original three movies. Because hmm. after George Lucas made his editing changes to it, a lot of people weren't happy. But, all right, but that's available. All right, so now, uh, today, I decided to add a page with just some interesting stuff. Now, that other um, podcasting light that we saw earlier, I searched on that type of an idea, and I found a couple of things on Amazon. One is this uh, UBZ, UB size selfie ring, they call it, which is a, uh, a stand that holds your smartphone and actually has a little LED light ring, and it clips to something. So if you're into doing portable stationary videos uh doing a doing a podcast or whatever 14.99 free one day i'm not you can order it now and get mm -hmm. it today why not sure why not so and they also have uh i have no idea what the quality of this is but there, there are versions now of um uh it says movo professional lavalier label clip Lapel, uh, lapel in, clip. Interview, on. interview microphone. Now, this doesn't look like from where the way it's plugging into this phone. It looks like it's a mini plug. It's not a lightning connection. So I don't know that they, it comes with a lightning adapter. I didn't read that far into it. For thirty nine bucks, I doubt it. But what this is, it's got it's got two lavalier microphones, one longer cord than the other, so you can actually be interviewing somebody for your podcast and clip a mic on them and clip a mic on you. Very simple. You don't have to worry about, you know, Wi-Fi, wi uh, uh, Bluetooth and all that. So handy little device. It does say iPhone, iPad, but I would go back and check. It looks like I said, it looks like a mini plug. So you probably would have to have a an uh, older lightning, phone. lightning to mini plug adapter to get it to work with the new iPhones. What was that? An older phone. Yeah, an older, or to get the adapter. I have several of the um, lightning to mini MIDI phone plug adapters because I like to charge and watch or charge and um, listen to something or play, uh, watch a video on my phone mm. when I travel. So it just makes it easy. And they're very reasonable now. I've gone through several of them because the, the cheap ones tend to have um, uh, either software issues or be very sensitive to static electricity. I fried one of them just taken off my jacket one time. I was going out for a walk and I came back inside, took my coat off and got some static electricity and the thing just, you could hear it in the, in the uh, earbuds. It went crack. And then after that, the, the audio was distorted. Mm -hmm. But you can buy them. They're, they're, you know, 14 bucks. So I have a couple of them. Some better than others. Read the reviews. All right. This is also very expensive, but uh, a cool device. Uh, Bose Soundware Companion Wireless Wearable Speaker that just drapes over your shoulders there. Two ninety seven. I think. I think um, there are lots of buying options for this. This is one. I think this is one of the prices. But boy, if you're into Bose and you're into good sound and you want to spend the money, this would be a nice, nice thing to be if you, if you, depending on the environment you're working. Obviously, it's going to other people are going to hear it. I don't know when I see. Only nine left, and then you see 23 used. I say, yeah, hey, what's yeah. wrong with that thing? <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. 
I wonder if it's got a built-in heating pad too. That would be good. <laughs> you warm your neck up. And is, it, is, there, is there a valve that you press and it becomes a neck brace kind of like? The... That's it. <laughs> yep. Next one is the, the EnjoyBot Bluetooth Beanie wireless knit winter hat with built-in stereo speakers and microphone for only $11.04. Living in time deal. <laughs> There we go. So actually, if it, depending on the uh, sound quality, it might be useful. I would I would guess that it, you could label it along with the the, the shoulder speakers up above. Yeah, you could you could be very very annoying to other people. We were walking through downtown Apex yesterday, and in, in the midday, and somebody drove through, and it was in the forties, with their windows down and speakers turned up as they drove through the town, and. It's, it was unnecessary. Right. Not, it, it didn't care what the music, it didn't matter what the music was. It, it happened to be obnoxious, but still, why would you think that on a day when you should be having, using the heat in the car, you could see the person in the car had a hat on and they were <laughs> bundled up. Uh, what is it that makes you want to have to share your music so desperately with other people? So, oh, well. It's not this fun. This final it's thing. Not, it's not fun to have a $3,000 stereo and you're the only one listening that's true well yeah. this was not a three thousand dollar stereo i can tell you right now because of the distortion it was it turned up so loud it was distorted. anyway no it, it doesn't matter but uh, it's it's probably some listed somewhere in uh the current list of of uh just psychological disorders that yep. they come out with every year they identify all these new disorders every year so i guess it's been on the list for quite a while of you know why you feel it necessary to uh, blow away other people's uh, day with your music. Think back, Amnon, to the days in yep. the '70s, early '70s, late '70s, early '80s in New York City when people walked around with these giant boomboxes yep. yep. and just had them blasting away. Neck, they have it on their shoulder, playing into their head. So these people are yeah. hard of hearing now. Amnon was one of them, no? Uh, I'm sure. He was. <laughs> no, I was not. Yeah, he was. Yeah, <laughs> I remember. I remember a guy seeing him walk walking around in New York City. He had on these long robes, and he had speakers hanging all over the robes, like small stereo speakers. But they were in not. They were not portable, and it was just like he was in a, a suit of armor with speakers on it, just walking around. He was very, very creative. All right. So okay. finally, this is. You can put this in the probably doesn't work category. Amnon, do you remember back when we were kids, they offered uh, something that said, make your black and white TV look like color? Yeah. And it was a film that you put over the screen. Over, yeah. But the colors, it wasn't accurate color. It was just right. like it created a rainbow it of color over your screen. It wasn't black and white. It wasn't yeah. gray. Uh, yeah, it didn't, it didn't make, you know, flesh tone right. white, black. It, it just made it like a prism. And it was... But turn your TV into color TV, you know, people bought it. So this is, this is in that category. It's a 12 inch HD screen magnifier that will ma magnify your smartphone. How? I look at this and say, how does this work? It may just be a, a magnifying glass. Magnifier glass. glass. Yeah. At, oh, that's all it is. Yeah. But so if you don't look at it exactly the right angle and the lighting in the room isn't exactly right, it's they actually, I remember they're selling uh, films like this with a stand that you put in front of your TV to make it a large yeah. screen TV. <laughs> yes. yeah. yeah, I do remember that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Oh, so Back in the this, uh, late 80s or something. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And this is uh, sponsored by people that make headache medications. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably. Because yeah. you'll look at this after a while, you're going to be like, oh. <laughs> It's like those and things that you stick on the rear window when you have a <laughs> a, a, a motorhome, and you have something right. the, yes. that you, you see. get a wider group. field of view. Yeah. 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 Oh boy. So yeah, I ordered one of these for each of you guys. So you need to test. Oh, thank it. you very much. Yeah. Did, is it coming with a box of ibuprofen? <laughs> it's called a wireless phone accessory. What about it is wireless? <laughs> Oh, there's oh, something boy. in the back there. There's kind of a stand. I don't know what it does. It's not like it, it can't amplify the, the, the lumens coming out of your phone. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's it for, for Computers 2K now specials for February 8th, 2020. Thank, I'm you. Not, Thank you very much. I'm not, You're with welcome. The, 
the camera on me. I want to show something. So you showed the in the specials, you showed the uh, uh, the Star Wars pack DVD, and you yeah. talked about. Okay, so this was when I still cared about it. <laughs> As you can see, it's totally rusted out. Oh, it's this tin can, right? And in it. Don't uh, don't judge me on on the mess on on okay. the desk. Okay, so got this plastic cover on it with Star Wars. Yeah. And this is basically what the content is. I'll just go over it quickly. So you got this. This is the entire script for the first three Actually, movies. Yeah, actually, it's a complete transcription with timestamps at the bottom to show you so you can follow up uh, the movie. Remember, <laughs> the videos would show how long the, 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 the video is playing, right? So you could uh, use that to follow. And, and then some artwork with it was a limited edition. So they put a number. Uh, over here, let's put it in focus. Wow. Anyway, there's a number here where it's time. It's a stamp, and a and a bunch of artwork from you know the backdrops and all of that. That's the way they used to do it because remember, these cassettes were enormous compared to a, a disc, right? So the three movies and some uh, uh, and some documentaries on uh, on a single third, third cassette the best thing about these videos you said keep keep a hold on them right is these are the original ones before the remastering oh that's great yeah yes. but they're vcr right they are terrible to watch today thankfully there is uh if you've ever heard about the 4k 77 project have you ever heard about that no so uh, a New Hope, the, the the first episode five, that that was produced in seventy seven, and so four K seventy seven is a is a fan project of uh, um, of cinema professionals who got hold of the original uh, theater reels of the original version. They digitized them by the, the, by themselves. And they cleaned up the image, and so you can watch today the 4K version by of the original one. They um, they mixed in the sound from the Blu-rays and stuff like that, and so you get like the best possible version of Star Wars. And you can download it via torrent uh, as long as you have some copy of the original media, right? Uh, it's legal supposedly and it's a uh, yeah it's a blast from the past every time i see it these actually sell on ebay for about 50 bucks i think today they're not they're may maybe 150 bucks but they're not like really really valuable but i remember getting them when i was i think 18. yeah yeah nido you're muted Oh, I was saying, so so when you were 18, so that was two years ago? Oh, yeah, something like that. Yeah. <laughs> Give or take. My uncle just turned 88, and I called him, and I said, so it's the 44th anniversary of your 44th birthday. <laughs> yeah. Like, All right. Uh, Let's see what else we have. Oh, here, oh. here's... Oh, Hold on. Go ahead. I, uh, go ahead. Before the specials, I posted two YouTube links. I post them again in chat. I uh, just wanted to like briefly mention these. So the first, back in 18 something, I don't remember the, the, the year, the Lumiere brothers, uh, which were uh, part of the first wave of development of cinema uh, photography. The pioneers, yeah, they were the- Yeah. yeah. 
and they made a film, uh, a train arriving at the station. They actually made a couple of shots of that, but there's one very, very famous, uh, it's a one minute long uh, film, uh, a train coming in to the station, the perspective where the camera is sitting is so it seems like the train is coming at you and it just passes like uh, uh, next to it and then it stops and then people come towards the camera and go to uh, get on the, the train. So using artificial intelligence uh, uh, tools, based tools, uh, the, the film was upgraded to 4K and uh, uh, and into 60 frames per second. And the second link, that's the upgraded version. And it is stunning to see like this glimpse into history, this one minute glimpse into history in such a clear way. There's some uh, colored version over there in YouTube as well. They're, they're really bad. They're not the, the colorization from black and white without any reference never really works and so i don't think those are really worth the time but the uh the 4k version is absolutely stunning and it's a glimpse of what it's like there's this uh in in popular media when you see uh you know some spy movies or something you they go to the specialist and they enhance the image and suddenly from something really grainy they can see uh, I don't know, the, 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 the license plate number, which is usually impossible uh, in real life. Uh, but with some really, really complex guesswork, which is what AI tool based tools are doing, you can get something amazing. And I think that's one uh, demonstration that I just had to share. So, so also, if there was that movie recently, They Shall Not Grow Old, which was uh, Peter Jackson took film archives from the British government and was asked to, as the celebration of the end of the armistice of World War I, they released all these films in the archive. And he was said, you're free to do whatever you want with this. And he took films of, of infantry from World War I. And he's got all the films from the Navy, everything flying. He's going to do something with it all, but he took it. And he t did that same process you're talking about, Gal, where they remastered it, they took out, they, they, they synced up the speed, and then they used artificial intelligence to fill in all the gaps. And they took what was the old shaky movie and made it look real. And then they added sound effects to it also. And it's absolutely fascinating. They Shall Not, they shall not Grow Old. It was a 2018 documentary that uh, uses the same technology. And they're gonna be producing, like I said, more, more movies about the British Navy, the British Flying Corps, uh, based on the on new the technology. technology. They, they okay. pioneered it. They just literally sat down and said, what's out there? We don't know what's there. Let's see who has the best technology to actually work with these films. Uh -huh. it's to, and the, I saw one of the early attempts at this with a scene that was filmed from turn of the century Brooklyn. And they showed the old choppy version and they showed the cleaned up version. It was only a sh 15 seconds, but yeah. at the very beginning of them having this technology. So absolutely fascinating. Awesome. All right. Nice. Okay, here's something. Starting last Thursday, companies across the world have a new free web service at their disposal that will automatically send out email notifications if one of their employees gets phished. The server is named I Got Fished and is managed by Abuse.ch, a nonprofit organization known for its malware and cybercrime tracking operation. Just like the other Abuse.ch services, I Got Fished will be free to use. Any company can sign up via the I Got Fished website. 
uh, signing up only takes a few seconds. Subscribing for email notification is done on a domain name basis. And companies don't have to expose the list of their employee email addresses to a third-party service. Once a company's security staff has subscribed to the service, the guys uh, to the service, I got fished will check its internal database for email addresses for the company's email domain. This database contains logs from phishing operations with emails for fish victims. So it's like a phishing blacklist. And if they have in their uh, database your domain name, that they were phishing going to any any email address, a catch-all kind of thing, to your domain name, they will let you know that there's a possibility of phishing. That's great, and it's free. So it's, I got phished. And it's by abuse.ch. And I see uh, Gal is already going go and get them i'll check them out yeah it's it's uh it could be very interesting what else do we have here uh this is this this is an interesting situation and i'm glad it happened by the way a u.s appeals court said late on Thursday it will not reconsider an October ruling that largely upheld the repeal of landmark net neutrality rule, rejecting requests by 15 U.S. states and tech and advocacy. The FCC in December 2017 reversed Obama-era rules prohibiting Internet service provider providers from blocking or throttling traffic or offering paid fast lane, a blow to large tech companies and consumer groups that had championed the level playing field of net neutrality. Hmm. A spokeswoman for FCC chairman said the internet has remained free and open, consumers have been protected, speeds have increased, and more and more Americans have gotten access to broadband. You, in order to get things to develop and, and go forward, you have to allow for competition and you have to allow for certain, I mean, if I have, if I have the money to pay for fast lanes, I should be able to pay for it and get it. And that allows the company that I'm paying to, to develop more stuff. They have more money. Uh, I I don't know. I never heard of anybody that got hurt by doing away with net neutrality. It may be out there that companies were saying, oh, you know what? I'm not going to develop this or that area. But I don't think that net neutrality would, would allow them to do it anyway. Uh, did did you guys come across anybody that said, or that that any articles that were talking about how their service was impacted because net neutrality was repealed? Nope. I I remember being very interested in looking at the stats as after the changes were made, uh -huh. and the people that were screaming about it how it's going to do this, it's going to do that, they became silent. Yeah. It really, it, and when you bring it up now, it's interesting because people are like, what? Oh, that was a problem? <laughs> yeah, well, that's, that's the thing, is that, is that a lot of people scream just because they don't, they think that something is going to happen. And well, a, a lot of people on the libertarian side were alarmed because they said this is not, the, the, the calling it net neutrality was like calling yeah. the, uh, you know, we're going to come and arrest you act, everybody's free act, right? So it was misnamed yeah. in a lot of ways because it really was a control that they put in place. Yep. 
we're going to control the prices. We're going to control, control the access and force people to do things when the, the government doesn't have a very good track record of doing that. So now that they've backed away, it actually shows that services have gotten better. Prices mm -hmm. have actually come down in many, ca many cases. I wouldn't say every case, uh, but that the availability is there. I, it's amazing it's taking this long to get out to the, I, I know they've just mentioned during the, the um, State of the Union about the rural internet, how I knew somebody who got laid off from Nortel, gosh, gosh, it has to be over 15 years ago, that went to work for the state as a person who was gonna implement and like direct funds to rural internet in, Nor in North Carolina millions of dollars that were coming into the state to be used to help build up communities. Mm -hmm. So it's been happening a long time. It's just, it's, it's, think about it in really rural areas, people are really spread out and to get wired connections to all those people is just really difficult to do. It is difficult. And yeah. I think wireless, remember when clear, clear yep. wire came out mm -hmm. first, they were going to be a city service and then they realized no that's not we're not going to penetrate that market and right. they moved over not. to being a rural service yep and it was good for a while i don't know what they got absorbed by somebody i don't remember who i don't know but the, the, the stuff for for rural it's either the company has a lot of money and they know okay you know if we if we run fiber to this village over there and we're going to get a bunch of people to sign up that they may do it. They may. I don't know. But for something like this, wireless is the way to do it. Uh, uh, a dish, you know, satellite. You know, the, the, the technology will, will get there where you're going to be able to do all this through a satellite. They are, they are doing, they are burying fiber more yeah. and more. And out in rural areas along main highways, which is good. Right. Um, so they can easily use that as a drop off point to, to support whatever local technology. Right. They. I mean, yeah, if you. John is mentioning 5G. I, well, the, diff, the problem with 5G is it's really good bandwidth and is designed to give you high speed, really high speed bandwidth over general broadband. Mm -hmm. But. 5G, the higher you go in frequency, the less distance you get. So the complaint that they were coming out with 5G was the spectrum that they were going to use was impeding on the radar bands and some weather bands for radar, weather radar and other things like that. Uh, the, the distances that you get for this, you're going to have to have more points of presence to support not only the number of users you're going to get, but also to give you the coverage you need and the power you're going to need to get this to work. So yeah, 5G is definitely going to be part of the solution, but probably not the first thing. Well, it's hard to say because back in the days of when they were rolling out cellular service, the fastest thing they could put in a community to give anybody any kind of connection was wireless, obviously, because there was, you, everybody can get connected. Yeah. But now that, now that you've got, such a flood of, of spectrum and you're so flooded with services and you're so flooded with competing bandwidth, it's not that easy anymore. No, but the thing, the thing is that uh, bringing uh, wireless service to an area, it's not the big problem. No, you could, you could back, have, back there were, there were tactical solutions for this where you could get a, um, a 30 mile bridge link. I actually have a, 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 a demo box up in the attic. I haven't taken it out in years. That's a wireless A five gigahertz mm -hmm. system that can go up the 30 miles line of sight mm -hmm. between two panel antennas. And it will transmit at around 15 to 18 meg mm -hmm. across this distance. So that's a perfect solution. If you've got a small so, town that right. just requires a really small town, but when you get it there, then you have to have another wireless system use it to get to the people's homes. Right, and and that today that's not. I mean, they, in many in many areas, that's what Google Fiber is doing today. They don't bring you the fiber to your home anymore. They just bring they, it to the community. 
then bring it to the community, and from there, there's a, it's wirelessly. And they can yeah, do it. And I remember it. back in, in 90, geez, 95, 96, there was a company right outside of Raleigh. I can't remember the name of it now. But the guy that owned it, I mean, they were selling, they were wholesalers, and they were selling just robotics, if you remember their customer. But the guy lived, I believe, in Pittsburgh. And there was a school there, and they did not have any internet there. He put a tower right at their office with a dish. And they put another dish on a, a tower that's already, already existed there. And it was line of sight. And he was supposed supplying the school over there with internet and it was you know that it wasn't thousands and thousands of dollars back then but today it's a lot easier to do stuff like this but it still takes money and yeah i mean you're not going to do you're not going to put that system in place if you're only going to have five people subscribing to you at twenty dollars a month a lot of wireless solutions are require a lot of regulatory yeah you got to get permits you got to get make sure the spectrum is available you got to you got to be the planning for it and all that is is pretty intense yeah but it's just like any managed service or any service offered by a carrier it's going to be covered by regulations and tariffs and so on right uh yeah. and and we're talking about google so there's more. Google Fiber that provides fiber to the premises service in the U.S. last week announced that it will no longer offer traditional TV bundles with news, sports, premium, and local broadcast channel. Gala, are you getting any of these services? No. No, I only got right. the internet. The, the internet. Current subscribers to fiber plans that include TV won't see their existing service modified or changed. Not yet, I would say. But new customers won't have the option of signing up for cable content going forward. As we return our focus to where we started as a gigabit internet company, we're also ready to challenge the status quo to finally come right out and say it. Customers today just don't need traditional TV. The best TV is already online, and we want to have you watch it in the ways that works best for your budget and your own viewing preferences. Well, it makes that's, sense. That's what Google says. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, it no, it, it makes total sense, yep. the, the move they're doing. They have YouTube TV, so they have the offering of TV that they can give right right through that and they had challenges with the uh, tv packages on google fiber um, because the content providers would uh change the uh, the price then google had to communicate that to their customers right and mm -hmm. so eventually what happened was like on a semi-monthly maybe quarterly basis uh TV subscribers from Google um, Google Fiber would get an updated uh, receipt with a higher price, mm -hmm. and that would infuriate them, of obviously. Course. So I think I think it's a very smart move by Google Fiber doing that, right? Uh, I th I think so. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you know, it's it's not. I always wondered about Spectrum from Time Warner. People are cutting the cord. They're just using them for internet. And they don't have caps. Yet. Yet. <laughs> How, why, why don't they put something in place that to discourage people from cutting the cord who are on their services? I say, you know, I mean, they're losing money because they're making a lot of money from TV. And if they lose that money, that's a big chunk. 
And and this is great that Google says, no, we want you to watch it online. We don't want we don't want to deal with TV. Well, because- keep in mind that when you were watching Google, uh, when you were watching TV through the fiber cable boxes, yeah. you were watching it online. You were right. using your own bandwidth to to gather the, to get the picture, yeah. right? So now let's just take the box out of the equation. Yeah, right. That's that's sort of like you're right. But like with AT and T, they don't care. They put a cap on it. Oh well, with the TV, if you have if you have the certain planes, then you don't have that. But I remember the big big thing was that with cable, doesn't take away from your bandwidth. Doesn't. Right. But uh, with uh, DSL, it does. So if you have five TVs. And you have 100 megabits. That's not really 100 megabits available to you on the computer. That you, I don't know, eight gig or whatever, or eight meg, whatever. Yeah, about it's, eight meg per per channel per, cha- per viewing channel. Yeah, like that. Yeah. So it, it's it's just interesting. I I love it that Google say that. I just hope that Google will keep on because there are all kind of stories that we read that Google is no longer expanding. If the fiber, uh, the fiber option, yeah. The fiber I, option is fine if they don't expand it. I, 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 I'm, I'm with them all the way. I mean, today there is enough, enough wireless solutions that they can implement. Maybe that they can. So, it's fine. Yeah. Did you happen to notice the story? about the uh, exploit remember years ago there was a technology they could do where uh, some uh, somebody could be sitting out in the street outside your house and they'd be able to reproduce what was happening on your crt by the radio frequency leakage that would come out of the monitor they'd be able to actually show the screen within a short distance from your house Mm -hmm. that well there's a new uh malware that they've discovered it actually comes out of ben gurion university they're doing the, they did the uh, study where they can use subtle changes in an lcd monitor to basically send binary data it, it does it, it's the exploit is not out there now it's not like it's people can you have to, and there, there's something called air gapping air gapping is where you want to have no physical connection to sensitive data to the internet or to other networks it has right. to stay within a closed network well, there's a way now that if they can get the malware on the computer, whether somebody puts it on there or social media does it, that they can actually, if you have a camera looking at the screen, the screen has subtle changes in brightness that actually send ones and zeros. Mm-hmm. So they were showing the demonstration they did was somebody was uh, using the malware to read a file on the on the air gap the machine and then broadcasting it over the monitor with the ones and zeros and you can see the it's typing out the text that's coming across that the, the user wouldn't see anything because it's the subtle changes right. your eye would never pick up right but the camera can pick it up and interpret it and actually leak information off the machine just from changes in the screen but something doesn't add up so you're saying you had to infect the machine that you were yeah, spying they're, on? Yeah, you have to put the malware on the machine. So that's the, that's, so, they say it's not out there. It's not like they need to worry if their system is secure. No, but what I'm it saying is possible. Is, my, my concern isn't that. It's like, okay, so I infected the machine. Shouldn't I just key log it instead? Wouldn't that yeah, be easier? Yeah. You'd have to yeah. you'd have to have continued access to the machine, or you would have to. It's if it's air gapped, it means there's yeah. no there's no connection. There's no connection to it. So this way, you can read it if you oh, put, okay. if you can get a camera. It's not connected to the internet. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a possibility. Okay. I mean, how how uh, if likely, someone you know it's it's. If, if somebody can get the malware on the machine, it means they have access to yeah. it. That, was, that right. doesn't mean they couldn't plug in a thumb drive and download all the stuff that the uh, that the keylogger recorded, and then you know go on their business. So that's. It. But this, what this is saying is that if they installed it, if they did this right, and they had, could see the screen and put a camera on the screen, they could read it without anybody even being aware of it. Mm. So. 
um, there, there's here, there's something else on the same mediums technology blog one zero reports that many websites today use a service that collects all of your mouse movements enabling replays of every move yeah what surprised the author was that the software even recorded when he shook his mouse around while deciding what to click on it felt like observing digital body language Session replay services have been around for over a decade and are widely used. One service called Full Story lists popular sites like Zillow, TreeSpring, and Jane as clients on its website. Another called LogRocket boasts Airbnb, Reddit, and Carfax. And a third called Inspectlet lists Shopify, ABC, and eBay among its users. They build themselves as tools for designing sites that are easy to use <clears throat> and increase desired user behavior, such as buying an item. If many users add items to the cart, but then abandon the purchase at a certain rough part of the checkout process, for instance, the service helps site owners figure out how to change the site's designed to nudge users over the checkout line. Full Story even has a feature that tracks what is called rage clicks. This is when a user gets frustrated with a site and starts angrily clicking over and over. So That's what uh, Spence does every morning when he prepares sure. uh, well, I know, the... I know special. somebody is watching my movement, so every morning I get up and I go like this. <laughs> <laughs> and the guy who's watching is like oh, having an aneurysm there because I'm shaking my mouth. Uh, but that's interesting that, that, you know, the website, if they subscribe to that service, they know exactly what you click and what you went from this point to this point, to this point, to this point. You never think about this. But come on. Uh... Let's take it a, a step further. Disney, yeah. Yeah. right? Yeah. Disney is known to track every visitor in their park. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right? Using those uh, watches and using video analysis. So it's like you're coming on a website. You want to make it, you want to perfect it. Then you use every possible tool that you can get. And this time is just tracking the mouse. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, it's interesting, but I, I don't I I doubt there's a privacy issue here. Well the the we keep saying that there's a privacy issues, but there's privacy issues with any anywhere you are. Well think about what we've already given up that we're not aware of. Yeah. And it's just now it, it's over slowly over time we're becoming aware of this stuff and, and we shouldn't act surprised. So <laughs> I now, do what I'd always do, but yeah, but I have a suggestion. Every time you're in, in a new site, just, uh, you know, uh, draw an F you with your mouth. <laughs> yeah. Or, uh, I see you. <laughs> exactly. Not today. <laughs> Good one. All right. It's that time of day. Anything else anybody wants to add? Nope. Going once. Going twice. No, huh? All right. So thanks, Spence, Gal, and good morning, Kathy, Hannah, Nabil, Mac, Norm, Katie, and Donna, Dina. Thanks, everybody, for tuning to Computers 2K Now. We hope you enjoyed and maybe learned something from our time together. Remember to practice safe computing. Back up your hard drive, update your virus scanner, upgrade to Windows 10. We'll be back here next Sunday at 9. But you can always reach us at computers2know.com. And those of you that like to listen to Nick tonight, it's 7 o'clock again. Nick 
composed and produced against the norm. Seven o'clock at atnshow.com. ATN show against the norm show.com. Or if you're in Wilmington or can hear Wilmington, he's on 106.7 FM Beat Toker. We'll see you next week. Have a great one. You are tuned to the Nissan Communications Network. If you tuned in too late, you can always watch each program in its entirety or download an MP3 audio file of it in the archive section at nissancommunications.com. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on Twitter, and like us on Facebook. Sponsored by Telestream's Wirecast Software, StreamingGear.com, Carolina Apparel, and DeltaForce.net.